Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville, brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker Trio 2, West Side Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 404 800 7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. I am Daniel Goodman. Over there is John Lewandowski, and we are from Milwaukee to Nashville. We cover everything Admirals and Predators related and the Atlantic Gladiators of the ECHL, as they are our affiliate. Today on tap, we have the Nashville Predators taking on the New Jersey Devils, the Chicago Wolves at Milwaukee, and the South Carolina Stingrays at Atlanta. So I think all, all the games were at home. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, that's about all I got for you. On that part, so let's get in it. We're going to go with New Jersey and Nashville first. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the New Jersey Devils took on the Nashville Predators today. Shots on goal in the first period. New Jersey outshot Nashville 22-12. to 12. In the second period, New Jersey outshot Nashville 12-10. to 10. In the third period, New Jersey outshot Nashville 13-10. to 10. And in total, New Jersey outshoots Nashville 47 to 32. And faceoff percentage was fairly even. Um, New Jersey had 50.9% to Nashville's 49.1. On the power play, New Jersey went 0 for 2 with 6 penalty minutes, while Nashville goes 1 for 2 with 6 penalty minutes. Nashville out hit New Jersey 37 to 20, out blocked New Jersey 27-17. Had 15 giveaways to New Jersey's eight and 17 takeaways to New Jersey's nine. Scoring in the first period on the power play for Nashville at the 404 mark was Ryan O'Reilly scoring his 19th of the year, assisted by Cody Glass, his third, and Roman Yossi, his 37th. Um, scoring in the second period for New Jersey at the 130. Mark was Hughes scoring his 17th, assisted by Hughes, his 19th, and Marino, his 13th. Just so that you can get recollection on this, not to cut you off or anything, but Jack, oh, no, you're good. primary goal, Luke Hughes gets the assist. Okay. And then for Nashville at the 701 mark of the second period, Tommy Novak scores his 10th of the year, assisted by Yossi, his 38th, and Glass, his 4th. So going into the third, the Preds had a 2-1 lead. Well, that didn't fare well. Um, Nico Heeshier scores his 15th with an assist from Jasper Bratt, his 36th, and um, Andre Pilat, his 12th. The Timo Meyer scores his 10th for New Jersey with an assist from Curtis Lazar, his 11th, and uh, I believe that to be Damon Mercer, his, his 11th. Well, uh, and then Nico Hishier scores an empty net with an assist, his 16th with an assist from Eric Halla, his 16th. Halla, Halla, Halla. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, Dawson Mercer. Thank you. Like I said, always got to make sure I'm right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, in net for the Devils was Nigel Dawes. He stopped 30 of 32. Um, their goal they need goaltending bad, so don't be surprised to see them going hunting for goaltending at the deadline. Yeah, like Nigel Dawes and Amir Schmidt are their goal, are their goalies, and they neither one of them hold the test of time. Now, what does this loss do for the Preds in net was, you, I believe, Soros. It won't let me click on the Preds for whatever reason. Um, Soros was in net, stopping third, uh, 43 of 46 with a 93.5 save percentage. Much better game from him, but he should not have had to see that much rubber. The defense needs to get a little better. I mean... If you really think about it, the shots could have been at 27 to 47. So right. they got peppered, to just put it that way. Um, 
I, I, I am very curious to see. Let's see how our boy, our, our two boys did. Um, Jankowski had eight minutes with a minus one. Afanasiev had nine minutes with a minus one. O'Reilly was a minus two. Um, uh, Lausanne was a minus two. Carrier was a minus two. And Yossi was a minus two. I can imagine Yossi was out there for the two late goals because they were try probably trying to get something to happen. Yeah. Yossi played 27 minutes. Um, second closest is McDonough at 21. Uh, actually, O'Reilly at 23. O'Reilly played 23 minutes. Forsberg at 21 minutes. Um, McDonough had 21 minutes, and Barry had 20 minutes. Um, we need to spread it out a little more in the forward category. Need to rotate four lines. Um, just going to leave that at that and talk it up. Go to the next one for the friends. Um, up next, we got the uh, Chicago Wolves at Milwaukee. The Admirals are they ain't even red hot at this point. It's white hot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you know the reference, you know the reference. Um, the Admirals coming into this have a 14-game win streak. Um, they have been dominant at home. All right. So shots on goal in the first period. Milwaukee out shoots Chicago 19-7. to In the second period, Milwaukee out shoots Chicago 14-3. In the third period, Chicago outshoots Milwaukee twelve to seven, and in total, Milwaukee outshoots Chicago forty to twenty-two. Now, on the power play, Chicago goes one for two at twenty-four minutes five infractions, while Milwaukee goes zero for three with nine minutes three infractions. Scoring in the first period at the twelve twenty-nine mark for Chicago is Kevin Fitzgerald scoring his fourth on the power play, assisted by Vasily Panamarov, his 21st, and Tori Dello, his seventh. Then at the 1959 mark for the Admirals, Fedor Svechkov scores his 13th of the year, assisted by Mark Delgaizo, his 18th, and Joachim Kemmel, his 14th. All right. Then in the second period, Zach LaRue scores his 12th with an assist from Ty Feliber, his Seventh with an assist from Willsby, his sixth. Uh, then at the 60 20 mark, Roland McEwen gets his sixth with an assist from Reed Schaefer, his ninth, and Mark Del Geizo, his 19th. Then in the third at the 10 02 mark, Jasper Weatherby scores his ninth with an assist from Kevin Wall, his fourth, and Ty Feliber, his eighth. <coughs> By the way, when Weatherby's goal went in, I never saw a happier look on Wall's face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, by the way, in the second period, Max Comtois gets a five-minute major for sparing and a game misconduct for the Wolves before I get more into the third. In the, uh, then in the third, at the 14-24 mark, Kevin Fitzgerald scores his fifth with an assist from Rocco Grimaldi, his 18th, and the newly christened captain of the Wolves, Chris Terry, his 19th. Uh, before that, uh, Marino and Grimaldi got into a scuffle at the 11-40 mark. Uh, Graval did not fare well in the scuffle, um, or the fight, if you will. They did fight at center ice, which was really cool. You don't see that very often. Um, two guys lock it up at center ice. Um, so, uh, but for what Graval did, uh, Marino was being a little more physical, um, kind of roughing up the smaller guys. So, Graval said enough of that. Um, Kind of just making a statement as a captain. Uh, Graval doing what he needs to do. Just going to put that there. Then on the uh, then at the 1835 mark, Reed Schaefer scores his fourth with an assist from Zachary LaRue, his 18th, and Roland McEwen, his 21st. Um, on the empty net. The three stars of the game. Um, only reason I haven't gotten to the goalies yet is I got to tip my cap where I got to tip my cap. And Adam Shields stopped 35 of 39. Um, he is the only guy for the Wolves that showed up to play. Yusuf Arsenu got the second star with no points. Um, not exactly sure why that was. I think it was just by his play and energy. Um, he, he was all over the place. 
Uh, Mark Del Geizo had two assists. Um, you know, Parson had three shots. Um, but what I'm going to get into real quick, the Admirals record at home league-wide, we're second place with less games played. If we play those two games at home and win, we're tied with Hershey. We're best record at home. Um, Hershey is 21 4 0 and 0. The Admirals are 19 4 0 and 0 with two games in hand. Um, it, it's something I wanted to bring attention to because if you actually want to look at this, the Admirals on the road are 13 6 and 1, where Hershey is 16 5 and 0, and the Admirals have three games in hand there as well. So the Admirals have games in hand against Hershey. So league wide, uh, the Admirals have five games in, against Hershey. So ten points on the board for them um, with their two shoot shootout losses. Um, if the Admirals can pick up all those points, um, will come in handy. Uh, the Admirals do win their 15th in a row in debt for the Admirals was Yaroslav Askarov stopping 20 of 22. <laughs> Attendance at the UW Panther Arena is 4,237. Your referees were Jared Cummings and Sean Davis. Uh, linesmen were Jameson Grunye and TJ Wild. Davis, go get a new job. Um, the Admirals this season are now 7-1 and one against the Wolves. Um, before we get into any more of that, the Admirals um, coming up play the Manitoba Moose on Saturday. Wait. Yeah, Saturday. Um, uh, we are taking uh, officially some time away to kind of take care of some stuff that we need to take care of this weekend. Um, uh, so we will not be doing shows from Friday to Sunday. We will be back on Monday with the 2 p.m. puck drop for the Admirals versus the Moose on Monday um, for that coverage. So, no, we will be here Thursday, but we will not be here Saturday's games. Uh, Saturday's games are day games, and I have stuff going on during the day. So I uh, I deeply apologize, but unfortunately I'm book. <laughs> um, also, can we point out how how uh, the Admirals pretty much dominated in the shot category in the first two periods? Yeah. Um, it, it was not even close. Nineteen to no. seven and fourteen to three. Right. Um, you know, uh, my my opinion of that. Um. Uh, the Rouge tripping was kind of weak um, as far as that goes. Um, but to see Falibur getting on the stat sheet again is a good thing. Um, all the young guys stepped up. Guys like Kevin Wall, guys like LaRue, guys like Schaefer, they all stood up, stepped up. These, they're, they're you know, mm -hmm. those guys are rookies. I'm not talking about Falibur, but I'm talking about like Wall, LaRue, Schaefer. Right. Um, Svechkov had the first goal to tie it with literally 0. .2 left. If they couldn't, you know, how long does it take to score a goal? One second, coach. Mm -hmm. Less than a second. Um, Just saying, you know, so kind of just want to bring that to attention. Around the league, Rock, uh, Texas loses to Rockford in overtime. Uh, Manitoba loses to Calgary four to two. Bakersfield beats Colorado two to one, and Cleveland beats Grand Rapids in a shootout. So the Admirals gained a point against Texas and Grand Rapids in the division standings. Not that it's close. It's we have sixty five points. They have forty nine. It's well over twenty. Or it's well over. It's at over fifteen points at this point. Right. Um, let's let's keep the streak going. Let's keep a point streak going. If you can't lose, win in regulation, at least try to get it to over overtime. Every point matters right now. Right. 
Let's get this, you know, going. Now, speaking of things that matter, for once, we get to cover one of these. So, on to the South Carolina Stingrays and the Atlanta Gladiators. All right. Shots on goal in the first period. South Carolina outshot Atlanta 13-8. to In the second period, Atlanta outshot South Carolina 10-9. to In the third period, South Carolina outshot Atlanta 9-5. to and in total, South Carolina outshoots Atlanta 31-23. to On the power play, South Carolina goes 1 for 5 with 23 minutes 6 infractions, while Atlanta goes 2 for 3 with 27 minutes 8 infractions. Scoring in the first period for Atlanta at the 443 mark is Jackson Pearson, assisted by Reese Vitelli. At the 14-19 mark of the first, Atlanta scores again with a goal from Micah Miller, assisted by Luke Prokop and Jackson Pearson. That was scored on the power play. Okay. And then at the 18-54 mark, Michael Marchezon scores for Atlanta, assisted by Zach Yoder and Luke Prokop. Then at the 1946 mark, South Carolina scores with a goal from Johnny Evans, assisted by Benton Maz and Jackson Leopard. Okay. Um, uh, at the uh, 0 0.20, so at the 22nd mark, Kevin O'Neill scores for South Carolina with an assist from Jack Adams. Any relation to the Jack Adams that covers the Boston Bruins? Just curious. Mm -hmm. Um. Then at the 13-15 mark, Brendan Hoffman scores for Atlanta with an assist from Nolan Burke, his 80, uh, sorry, uh, Nolan Burke and Robert Kalosti, or Kalosti. Um, Then at the 705 mark, uh, Michael Marcherson scores with an assist from Reese Vitale. And then Benton Moss scores for South Carolina with an assist from Jackson Leopard and Johnny Evans. Then Austin Magara scores with an assist from Kevin O'Neill and Nick Lieberman. In the third, no scoring. Atlanta wins five to four. All righty. Um, Atlanta's still in last place. Um, yeah. Not really a great night. By the way, Hoffman's Hoffman's goal and uh, for Atlanta, which was the fourth goal for Atlanta, um, that was on the power play, and then the fourth right. goal for South Carolina was on the power play. That was Magara's. That was All his twentieth. Right. Um, Pearson his eleventh. Miller his nineteenth. Marchison after today has eight with the he had two. Um, Evans is at has his tenth for South Carolina. O'Neill has his twelfth. Um, uh, uh, Moss has his fifth, and Magara has his twentieth. In net for the Atlanta Gladiators is J uh, I believe that to be Jalen Boyko. His he stopped twenty seven or Josh Boyko. Sorry, Josh Boyko. He stopped twenty seven of thirty one. While in the net for Uh, South Carolina was, why are you giving me a headache? Yes, there's Josh Boyko for Atlanta and Mitchell Gibson. He stopped 18 of 23. Not a really good night. The three stars of the game for that game were uh, Race Vitelli, Jalen Boyko, and Marcheson. Uh, I apologize. I have to pull back up the cards game. I never did the three stars. Um, I would also. Uh. Uh, three stars of the game. Third star of the game was Tommy Novak with a goal. 
Second start of the game was Jack Hughes with a goal, and Timo Meyer had the game-winning goal for um, New Jersey, so he got first start. So that'll do it for that. Um, I would like to thank, um, before I get too far in, uh, into our wrap-up of our show, I would like to thank the Admiral's um, staff today for taking care of my family well, um, and taking them down so they could see the uh, practice from the ice. Um, I had no part in it. I did. I got called and told to there was somebody coming to look for me and to go meet them somewhere. So literally, like I had no clue of this at all. So um, it was a surprise to me. It was a great moment to have as a uh, father. Um, if you want to check it out, it is on the Admirals um, Instagram and Facebook uh, stat, uh, page. Uh, yeah, Admirals, their stories. So if you want to check it out, um, you can see me on there and a giant Admirals jacket looking like a like the Admirals version of the Michelin Man. <laughs> yeah. huh. But we thank you. And speaking of thank yous, thank you to our sponsor. Hockey Locker, 2002 West Side Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Um, I would also like to wish um, uh, a happy birthday to uh, Amber Draves. Uh, I know I didn't get to do it and earlier, so congratulations. Um, she uh, was at the game tonight celebrating her birthday. Um, so Thank ever thank you everyone and have fun. See y'all on month uh see y'all on Thursday for the Thursday. rest. See y'all on Monday <laughs> for everybody else.